Hello, welcome, I'm Ellie, and you and I are here, we're, we're, we're all here, and everybody else, we're here for the second part of the build of the Hedleg Harry Potter Chamber of Secrets set. This is as far as we got, we're up to bag number six, check out the first part if you haven't seen it, but now, yeah, we have to find out what's happening in bag number six. Before we do that, I had to put Headless Nick, well, nearly Headless, Headless, Headless Nick up here on the flying thing, which you can also use for a broom flying stick thing. Now, minifigure in this bag looks pretty unhappy. Oh, it's Ginny! It's Ginny! And I know exactly why she's unhappy, so I'm gonna give her her wand so that she has a little bit of fight in her. She's unhappy because this book is basically just ruining her life. It's hallucinating. She tried to flush it. Oh, you know, everything a good book should. This book had none of those things. This is Tom Riddle's diary, of course, so this is, is ready. It's all ready for the story to progress. So Ginny, Ginny's got the good book. Does this pack come with another chocolate frog card? It does not. We're getting straight into the building here. And it looks like it might, oh, 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 I got, I, I just remembered that this part's obviously going to be the dungeons part. So we're getting into basilisk territory, down into the, not the sewers, <laughs> into the drainage. It is the sewers really though, isn't it? I mean, if it's where the toilets go, then it's where the F Fluent goes as well. Oh, that's a lovely thought for this time of the build. Okay, so we are building the the bit underneath the castle where, yeah, where the basilisk is hanging out and, and where there are lots of secrets. It is a chamber full of secrets. There's not just one chamber, there are lots of there are lots of secrets, including uh including bones, nice big long bones here. A white frog, hello, hello froggy for this room. A white albino frog has been down here in the dark. Obviously, it doesn't need any pigmentation on its skin, and a slide so that we you can have a bit of fun before you fall down to your doom. It's perfect. Okay, our uh, arch is going on. I think that's we we'll just try it out again. So you go straight through there. We're gonna put Ginny down here because this is where she ends up anyway. So sorry, Ginny, but that's what the story says is gonna happen. I can't rewrite the story. I can make up my own details, but you know. Can't rewrite it. It's 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 basically law now. And this this rock here breaks away so that you've got the entrance to the slope. The entrance. Where is that going to connect up to? Is this? Oh, can we actually connect this part to, to 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 Myrtle's toilets to the bathroom? And can we get the snake to come out of the? To oh, I'm gonna have to see. So this is cool. Chamber down here with all the bones. This is, I mean, you can put it wherever you want, but according to the instructions, we're putting it here at the moment <laughs> uh, with, with, with the, the Defense Against the Dark Arts classroom on top. And then now we're starting finally to put these together, putting Lockhart's rare room up the top and there's a flying space next to it. But like I've said, this is modular. You can put these around however you want. I'm trying to shove the basilisk through there. I don't think he's designed to go through this way but I'm gonna see if I can make it fit. <laughs> I don't think he's, I think he's probably better off going out that way and not in that way. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Okay, I'm loving this. I'm loving building the dungeons. We're up to bag number seven and straight into the building. Got some green, ooh, green oozy bits there on the side. Some stalactite mites going up there. And a nice big framey kind of thing. I do like the interspersing with of the, the grey with the translucent green parts. Just looks like slime. It looks icky and perfect. Mm, okay, rod right on the side. We're gonna be able to attach something to that, I think. This is looking like a door frame. Oh, for the official chamber of secrets entrance for the big. Yeah, okay, this is what this is for. So I need to put these, yeah, that's a bit wrong. Let's fix that up. And these ones then will fit down the bottom. Oh, it's all smoothed and circular now. This is the door. Oh, it looks ominous and huge. Oh, cool. Okay, and on the front, I'm assuming this is the front, on the decorated side of the door, we have got a whole heap of snakes because this is Salazar Slytherin's this is his domain. And did you need to be able to speak st snaky tongue? Snake verse, snake, oh, parcel tongue, parcel tongue. <laughs> Lost it there for a minute. Parcel tongue to be able to open this, I can't remember. But I remember it was really important and you open it and then the big basilis came out and then the whole world ended. Got another, didn't actually, but another frog up here in the next room. There are a whole heap of little glow in the dark dots up here, which I don't know what they're for. Are they for the, are they algae for the frog to eat? The chocolate frog? <laughs> 
They gotta be. I'm going with owl droppings. That isn't, is that a brand new owl? I've never seen that owl one, that owl print before. He's pretty. He's a really pretty owl. Right, so we can put the snake basilisk through here with the greatest of ease either way. You can choose. Oh, there is a chocolate frog card in this here. Oh, how wonderful. It's Slytherin again. Now I have got three Salazar Slytherins. Mmm, okay, so that's, that's, that's pretty, mm, that's quite a few duplicates there. <laughs> three, three of them. Okay, who wants to trade? We're up to bag number eight, and there's a lot of grey in here, so we got more dungeon building to do, but we do get another character who is in monochrome. He has escaped from... Yeah, he's escaped from the past. This is Tom Riddle. His hair's not in monochrome, but his, his robes definitely are. So Tom Riddle is, he's got his angry face on because really he's just always angry, right? That's part of his problem. If only he'd just take his annex, have a lie down. He'd be fine. Now, what is happening down here? We've got a chocolate poop going on here. It's hiding in the corner. I'm going to guess it's snake poop, though that is not the, hmm, that's not the shape that snake poop normally, is it though? Is snake poop all nice and curly up that like like that like a Mr. Whippy soft serve ice cream? I don't think it is. But we do have our green frog. Got a green frog down here. That's nice. This one's got a bit of colour. I've got a flaming torch down here, which never indicative of having a good time. Whenever anybody comes at you with a flaming torch, you know it's not going to be for a good reason. Another glow in the dark dot down here in that little tiny corner. I'm going to call that one algae. Though the ones up higher. I'm going to go with them being, yeah, being owl poop. We're making some really, really interesting shapes here. Got some green slimy bits up on this archway, and that's obviously hanging in the air because we're going to be connecting it to this, which has also got some matching chocolate poop or snake poo or, uh, mm, or, or a Mr. Whippy chocolate soft serve ice cream in the corner because that's where you keep your chocolate Mr. Whippy ice creams. I don't know about you, that's where I keep mine. I don't. Uh, okay, so this goes, we're making it, we're making a mirror image of the other side. So the arch is gonna connect these together just like this. Ooh, that looks ominous and awesome. There are some claws out the front to actually hold something in. Right, speaking of holding something in, is this the thing we're gonna be holding in? I don't think so. That looks like an enormous, oh, they're eyeballs. Okay, that's freaky. So, this, oh, this is a beautiful, beautiful statue of Salazar Slytherin. And the serpent can go straight through his mouth, through the tunnels, bypassing all the effluent from the bathrooms. Oh, that looks fantastic. Oh, that's so good. Is this like a mustache? Hold on, I've got, I've got, it is a moustache. How come, uh, do my three copies of my chocolate frog Salazar Slytherin, do any of them have moustaches? I only noticed an enormous beard and a baldy head. Okay, bag number nine, fantastic tunnel there. Now, this is where we get, ooh, the fancy gold 20th anniversary <gasps> minifigure of, oh, he's got stars on his robes, 20 years Lego Harry Potter. Whose head's going on this? Oh, it's a good friend, Mr. No Nos. Very nice. He who must not be named also has got a gold wand, but I'm not giving it to him because he won't use it responsibly. So there's also a chocolate frog card in this bag, and it is not a duplicate, it's Jacunda Sykes. Nice. Apparently she's famous for being the first witch to cross the Atlantic on her broom, I think. But I looked that up and then I forgot the proper details. But I think it was something like that. <gasps> Look at this serpent head. Ooh, statuary to go down in the dank depths underneath Hogwarts. Two of them. And they are actually, ooh, they're not too permanently popped there. So you can Pop them in and out. Oh, they look very, very majestic there in their own little featured archways. Ooh, so ominous. I'm really enjoying this, <laughs> this dungeon, enjoying the build of it just a little bit too much, I think. What does that say about my mental state? I don't know. I think it just means I'm enjoying building something a bit different and it's really, really cool looking. Okay, so building out... Uh, this this section here, which otherwise would just be flat, this gives it some really nice dimension. Bit of slime with those icky green colours there, those algal greens. 
Oh, this is fun. And this is going up, up, up to put some, yeah, some smooth parts and some jumper plates on up here, which means we're going to be able to put, I think this is probably the right size to put the great hall on the top of. And also it's sitting in the background waiting for me to put it on something. So this is what it's obviously going to go on to. The great hall is going to be sitting above this den of iniquity. Okay. That's very cool. Okay. Okay. So what do we have now? This is a, an enormous Okay, we have a bench with a chocolate frog and a teacup. Yeah, okay, because everyone likes to head down into the dungeon to have teacup and a croissant and some breakfast cereal. I don't think this is for the dungeon. Pixie puffs, mm, they're goblin great. Oh, oh, that's a terrible pun. And this one here is cheery owls. These are fabulous. I like these wizarding cereals. So they go up here, not down in the dungeon. So that's going to be an expansion on the great hall when we put on it a fixed spot up there. Okay, now this is definitely the right color scheme to be back in, back down in the Chamber of Secrets. There's a horn thing down there, which I think is just like a bone or a, <gasps> it's, it, I reckon that's supposed to be the tooth. Yeah, nice. And this slides into here and gets held in with the little clips and you can actually remove it to make a pathway through for the basilisk to go through. And then when you just want it to be filled in, you put that stonework back in there. That's really cool. Got some pins on either side so you can actually be attaching this to, well, let's find out. Let's see. So this goes on the top. Obviously, because that, I mean, that, that, that's, that's how it was designed to go. I don't think I can put anything else up here above it because it's got that little outcrop that's got oh, the dining table on it. But then, then we plug the, what do we do up here? We put this bit all the way up on the top and we can't put anything next to here because that's obviously the top part of that section. Now, how are we supposed to plug it in according to the instructions just as is? That looks so cool. And this goes over here. We've got a couple of technique pins left over which we can use to mix and match our variation. We can add new buildings as we have them, but let's just attach this on the side. Right, okay, so this is the Chamber of Secrets as it stands from the box. Let's have a look at the glow-in-the-dark options and it's looking really good. I can see I can see the, the crystal ball at the top, headless Nick, nearly headless Nick. Gosh, why do I keep getting that wrong? Cannot see anything on this side, so I don't know why I turn it around. Look, I can see this. I don't, I, it's floating around now because I actually took this bit off and now I can't get it back on again in the dark. Let's uh, Let's see whether I can put it back on as well as I can and then I'll fix it when I've got the lights back on. I can't see very much of the ones down in the dungeon but they're a bit hidden away. So this is the bit that I took off in the dark very, very stupidly but now it's, it's back on. It's easy to fix. Right, okay. I want to add the bathroom, the, the Myrtle's bathroom here, no, not, not up here. I didn't really need to take all that off. I want to put it under here so that it's directly connected to that slope. Look at that. So if you flip up the bathroom, you'd be able to like the, 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 the toilet, like the sink thing, the sink, you'd be able to go straight down that slide down into the chamber of secrets. Oh, I'm so excited to build the other rooms as well with fluffy and, and, and the, oh, and the broom, the, the broom flying incident. And there's a broom flying incident. And there's another, is there another one? Oh, I don't know. I'll have to look. Oh, okay. So I'm looking forward to building the others, putting them with this one, basically playing Jenga and seeing how we can stack them all. Oh, we can make this very exciting. Okay. I loved this build. Make sure you subscribe now if you want to see more builds because you know more stuff comes up all the time I'm always building keeps me out of trouble and off the streets <laughs> okay i will see you again soon bye